Here is our dress where we left off in part one. Let's go on to part two. So I am actually going to go to the Clo Fabric Library, click on Fabric, and simply pick a nice cotton. I will choose the Cotton 40s Poplin. I'm going to drag this right onto my fabric in my object browser. And I'm going to desaturate the texture that is on this fabric. And I'm going to change the color to this to something that is just neutral. OK, we're going to be changing this color based on what we're going to do uh, with our pattern, our texture at the end. Then I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to simply click the copy option here. And what I want to do is I actually want to go back and make this version of the pattern. I'm going to make the original version of the pattern white. But prior to that, I want to apply this new fabric right now to just the waistband. Now, if I go back to my original copy of this and change my fabric back to white, I will have a separate color. This dress, I'm going to use a separate color to help us with some details. The first detail I'm going to create is that I'm going to click on this outer segment line of the dress hem, right click and say offset pattern outline. When I do this, here we can see the the distance, the default. I'm going to change this to three inches, and I am going to say to create an internal line. When I do this, as you can see, our pattern extends, and there is now an internal line on our pattern. The reason that I did this is so that I could actually select this internal line, right click, and say cut and sew. So this will become trim in the contrast color. The other thing I'd like to do with this is I would like to add a lettuce edge to our trim that is uh, that right here on the end of our skirt. I can do this by also using our elastic effect. I'm going to use my edit pattern tool, select the trim, turn on the elastic in the property editor, and here instead of letting it get smaller or leaving at 100, I'm going to put in the number 125. When I do that and simulate, our lettuce edge will be formed by the longer line on the edge of this trim. And when we go to a high resolution garment, this will be more pronounced. Next thing I would like to do is I would like to add a trim around her neck in a similar way that we did here. Rather than offset our pattern, I'm going to select this segment line, right click, and say offset as internal line. Here is the last measurement that I put in here, which was at one and a half. I'm going to then say two inches and click OK. Again, I will be left with an internal line, which I can then select and cut and sew. And because my pattern was unfolded with symmetric editing, it also did the same for the other side, and I will apply my new fabric to this. Next, I'd like to put this same trim on the back. But because the neckline in the back is a little more shallow, it's a little difficult to offset the internal line. When I do that, it doesn't quite match up with the line that's in the front. So I'm going to keep this line in here, and I'm going to manually edit the end point so that it matches up with the front part of the pattern. It's a little tricky to get them to visually match. I could measure the line and insert a segment point if I want. I'm just going to do this manually until I get it really close. There we go. Then as you can see, my line is a little bit, the curve is a little bit off. So I'm going to take my edit curve point 
tool and remove the curve points that are there. I can then add in the curve points and change my curve to match the front so that it looks like a continuous curve. I will then just simply select again and cut and sew. And then I will select those two pattern pieces and assign the contrast color. I think I'd like to add some sleeves. I'm going to use a new tool called the spiral tool. This creates a spiral pattern piece. To start, I'm going to shift select both sides of the opening for my sleeve. When I do that on my cursor, I get a measurement. That measurement is around 15 and a half inches, and I'm going to keep that and remember that for when I create the spiral pattern. So here's my spiral tool. I'm going to simply click in my 2D window, and I will get a dialog box that is going to allow me to edit my pattern. There is an inner radius that I can change that will change the opening, the overall size. There is an offset that if I set to zero, will create a perfect circle. Now when I do that, and if I then change the inner circle to be the measurement that I want to go in my sleeve opening, I'm gonna make it a little larger than the actual measurement. I think I'll make it 20. I get a really nice circular pattern. I could also change the inner and outer end pieces if I wanted to make this asymmetrical. I'm going to leave them the same measurement, two and a half inches, and then click OK to finish. Again, I'm going to make this pattern the contrast fabric. And I'm going to rotate this so that I can then place it where it would go around the shoulder. I'm then going to make a symmetrical copy with sewing and make sure that one also lines up in the right place. I'm going to use one to multiple free sewing. front of the sleeve, the back of the sleeve. And because these are symmetrical patterns, it does the other side for me as well. When we simulate, the sleeves fall right into place. And as you can see, because of the sizing, I start to get a nice ruffle going around the shoulders. You can also see that the ruching has improved because of the shearing that is going on there, and that will get even better when we cr turn this into a high-resolution garment. Finally, I am actually going to change the lengths of these inside pieces because now that this is a circular pattern, there are curve points on the outer and inner edges of my pattern. So when I change these lengths, if I shorten them from two and a half to one, I get a nice asymmetrical shape going on. If I change them both the same length in the same direction, then when I put them into place and let them simulate, there will be a nice wider part on the top of my shoulder. The inner sewing length stays the same and the sewing does not get affected at all. Finally, I'm going to again use my elastic technique to add a lettuce edge to the outside of these two sleeves so that they will match the lettuce that has edge that has been applied to the bottom of my trim of my skirt. There is one final construction part of the dress that I want to take care of, and that is I want to add a zipper to the center back of the bodice. 
the first thing I do is delete the existing sewing that is there and simulate so that the two halves fall open. When they then fall open, I can then go ahead and place in my zipper. I select the zipper tool and I start at the top and move down the segment where I want the first part of the zipper to go in and I double click. That line turns dark to let me know that I have successfully placed the first half and then I do the other half starting at the top coming down to the bottom and double clicking on the blue picking point. I can then see that my zipper has successfully been put into my garment. I'll simulate so the two halves come together and what I like to do is immediately select the zipper in this case and change the width, especially in a woman's garment to make it a little bit more delicate. And then I also select the hardware, the slider and change it as well as the puller and change it to be something a little bit more delicate. And there our entire garment has been finished, our last piece being the zipper. So now let's change the print and the color of our fabrics. I have some patterns here that I would like to choose from. And I specifically have an Illustrator file that I'm going to use. It has three colorways in it. I'm simply going to take this file and in from the library, I'm going to left click and drag it right on top of the icon in the object browser. I then have my three colorways and I'm going to choose the one in the middle here, the blue one and click OK. So there is my pattern. It's a little small for my taste, so I'm going to use my texture edit tool. Next, I think I would like to change the solid color of the contrasting fabric. I'm going to simply click on the color in the property after selecting it in the object browser and click on the eyedropper in the color palette window. Then I'm going to select the color that I want, in this case the blue. Press escape to get out of the eyedropper. I can also affect the materials of all the other parts of Clo, in this case the zipper. I'm going to start by selecting the zipper tape. And I'm going to change the actual zipper tape using the assets in Clo from in this case plastic to nylon. And then I'm again going to click on the color icon and use my eyedropper to change the zipper to blue. Select the hardware of the zipper. I can change the material to something else, in this case plastic, and also change it to self-color blue to match the dress and the tape of the zipper. To complete her outfit, I'm actually going to change the color of the shoes. I could change everything about these shoes if I want, but I am just going to select the uppers. Shift select both of them. And when I do that, I will notice that in the property editor, there is a texture there. I'm going to delete that texture using the little trash can to the right. I'm going to change the material from matte to silk or satin. And then one last time, I'm going to use my eyedropper to change her shoes to blue. At this point, I'm going to stop on this dress. We could, of course, do some editing with darts or lengths. And as we move on to see a turntable, we've done some styling of our avatar and made a couple other small edits on the fabric itself and the smocking around the waist. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to find more tutorials about how to succeed with Clo. Thank you.